Okay, here we are then. We're gonna take a little flight up round the new Redford Estate in Gillingham. So I've done the pre-flight checks. The drone is all good to go. I've checked the apps, all safe to fly. Um, so yeah, here we go. What I'm gonna do first of all is obviously I've done the preliminary check. We've got a few overhead wires and behind me is a great big tree. So to start with, what I normally do is obviously take the drone off. What I will do, I will start recording the screen. And up we go. It's gone straight up. So I would then just have a little scan around. I'm now flying at 70 foot. So I just want to have, what I'll do for this, but actually I'll just record a little video so we can stick that on as well. Um, but just having a little look around above me now and obviously making sure I am well above that tree for that is the tallest, tallest tree above the Red Row Estate, which I'm just about to fly around. Um, there's nothing else close to that on this height. So we should all be good to go. So what I would do now, at 70 foot, we will land the drone again. And we'll bring that one down. There we go. And now I will plan in a route. So on my routes, I'll put in a fresh one and I want to do an area route. There we go. So we can see this area here is where I want to shoot. There's a the main road coming in. So it is quite literally this bit here. So I will draw a point to there. I'll draw a point to there. I'll draw a point out to there and over to there. And I'll make it just a little tiny bit bigger than what we actually need. So we get a few side shots in as well. So then we can blue tick that. It's Matrice 4E. We press OK. Now we want an oblique collection, which will do obviously the 3D. So we could make a 3D model out of this. Then we want to set the root altitude. We only want that, let's say 110. That's close enough. That's going to miss everything. If that tree was 70 foot, 110 might even go just a little bit high let's go up to let's go to 150 just to make sure and climb to start point course course angle 79 percent which is all good and on the advanced settings that is all as we want it so we can actually so the ortho gsd an oblique gsd so it's 1.74 which is so it's going to be quite close it's going to be taking lots and lots of photos so once that is all done, we can press the save. Then it will tell me my start point is going to be back over there somewhere. And then it will literally just do a run now of flying around and recording everything. So I'll press play. It takes me this. Obstacle avoidance is on break. So if anything comes in close to it, the drone will just stop. I can then upload the flight mission and press start. And the drone We'll take off. The pause button is up on the top left hand side of the screen. I will keep an eye to make sure it goes off to where it is meant to be going. So it should turn around and fly over there. Now you probably can't see this on the 360 camera, but I will try to zoom in so you can track and watch the drone. So I'm going to keep an eye on this drone, obviously at all times, which I can see now on the screen and up in the sky. So now, I just watch it fly around. This is a boring part, I can sing you a song, I can do a dance. I don't know, do what you want. But now hopefully the screen is still recording. So I'll bring it up there. This is all the photos it's taking. Obviously as it does the perimeter, I can still see the drone over there in the distance. Because it's a fair old sized drone, the Matrice 4E. So you can see him from quite a way off. So this is all the photos it's taking as it flies down off the side angle view. It will do quick all round so you get a nice 3D version. You can then obviously bring up the map to see where it is on the map. 
You can also bring up this camera, which I'm hoping this is showing you all that. But here you can see the front, the back of the drone, and the sides of the drone. But I like to keep it normally on the map. So I could just see where it's going. Now what I'll do, come on here. I haven't got my sunglasses on, which I'm regretting hugely because that's right under the sun. But I can hear him going along there. And he's doing it as he's meant to be doing. It says he's 18% complete. Um, the actual mission itself, um, estimated time left is seven minutes and 20 seconds. So I'm gonna leave the cameras rolling just in case you get anybody come up to me and start shouting at me, going land your drone, whatever. I've got full permission here. I've, um, obviously airspace you can fly in. I'm not flying over um, anyone's private property. This is a new estate. No one's living in these houses, or maybe one guy is because he's washing his car outside. So maybe they are living in these houses. Who knew? But anyway, we're just flying across. We're not invading anyone's privacy. We're literally just mapping the area. Um, and I've uploaded this flight plan mission to all the authorities that need to know if I'm doing anything. I've got all of my licenses. I've got everything. So yeah, we're all good to go. Just a countdown now of six and a half minutes. And once this is done, this will give me then a complete um, obviously, which you'll see, we do follow through on the computer as well. This will give me a complete 3D view of the whole estate and everything else. And I'm also going to try and pick an empty house over here. It might be quite tight in between houses. I would have liked something with a little bit more space round or just a row of houses. But we'll have a look on thing if I can find anything that I can then do a more detailed flight plan around because this will actually create the map on the handset itself as it does it so you can then basically pick out a house and say i want to do you know a close-up high definition scan of that house and it will then generate a 3d flight plan around the house normally like that with the blue where well, the green lines that go around the house um, and then you will get a very high definition scan of just a single house so i'm just gonna stop talking for a minute and just let this do its thing well i'll have a look at the photos it's taken i can still see them just about i don't think the 360 cam is going to pick up on that because he is just a big black dot he might do might be able to zoom in and this is my thinking face as i'm watching so staring into a quite a bright sunny day but not too dark a shadow so it's almost perfect it's a bit overcast so yeah it's quite a good a good day to be doing this because you're not going to get any deep dark shadows so it means when you put it onto the computer you can then um, especially what i normally put over the blender to make a little um, video on it then you can make your own shadows and you could have that but if it's already got shadows imprinted onto the actual image then it makes it a little bit more difficult that you can't play around with it so much as you can if it's an overcast day but i'm just looking at a lamppost here and there is there is a shadow on the floor but it's nothing it's nothing major so we've got four well, five minutes left, four minutes, 53 seconds left. And I'm just watching it. There's no trees, there's no birds nesting around here. Obviously, the tree behind me is fine, but there is no bird's nest or anything in there we really need to worry about or concern ourselves with. So this is a good, good place, building sites. Um, a new housing develop developments to test this drone out, really. I've done a few, few different missions, different houses with it. Um, but I thought to map a whole estate would really put this drone to the test and it is you know it's quite what is the altitude the 100 yeah 151 foot um yeah well i could have come down a lot lower which would if you fly the closer you fly to the house is the better quality um images you're going to get because you're not going it's not going to be zoomed in or cropped and as soon as you start zooming in and enhancing stuff anything on digitally you're going to lose a little bit of quality but this has got such a good image sensor on it i really don't think it's going to make a big difference but I might try, let's say, one of the houses where I come in close in low and get a really good, and then just compare the image quality to this one. And yeah, with four minutes left, I need to get a shoulder strap to hold the controller because he's quite a, as you can see, he's quite a big weighty, weighty thing. I need a stand, you know, it has got mounts on it, so you can actually put a stand and have it flying but I, I also in case I have in case anything happens bird attacks bird attacks happen 
or someone thinks I'm spying them and they start throwing stuff at the drone, I'd like to have the controller in my hand that I can make a quick evasion or yeah, just so I'm in control of the drone at all times. So I don't have to panic and then try and grab the drone and take control of it because every second counts when you're up in the air like this. So he's coming along now, he's, he's flying so slowly, which is good because he's taking a photo every 0.7 seconds. So all these photos, it means you know, the overlap is going to be amazing. So we're going to get good quality, good quality images out of all this, which we'll put it onto DJI Terra, which I normally use first. Um, I do, I have used um, the Epic, on the Epic Store, the Reality Capture, which comes in with like Unreal Engine and everything like that. Um, I do find, we'll do a test later on actually with all these images, um, just to see the difference in quality. But I do find the Unreal, or oh, sorry, the Reality Capture does lose a little bit of quality compared to the actual DJI Terra, which the DJI Terra is expensive, but I've got it free for the first year with the Matrice 4E, because it's only come out at the end of February this drone. So I've got a year's worth of testing out. Um, yeah, DJI Terra, and I've got to admit, I'm tempted to, to carry on with it because it is a lovely, lovely bit of software just for the quality and everything else is all very easy to use. But let's say I'll do a video following this one. You're probably sick of hearing me ramble on, but I will do a video after this one. Once the drone's landed, we'll have a look and see what see what we've got and try and find somewhere we could do a close up scan around. Maybe it might have even captured those silo solutions around there. The big things we might even just do a little localized fly round of one of them rather than a house. Because as a housing state nowadays, they don't give you much room. There's not much gap between the houses. And I don't really want to put the drone that much to the test on this flying in between sort of a three meter gap on basically what was autopilot. The sensors are good on the drone, but I don't know how much I trust them. So we're almost there now. We're 83% through one minute 40 left running out of things to fill the time with. I should have practiced a, I don't know, a dance or a song or, or yeah, brought something along for entertainment purposes, but I am also watching the drone. And then you know, if anyone's still watching this at this point, you know, well done for sticking with us. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, obviously shoot them at me. I'm, I'm not an expert, but I've been doing this for, for a while. Um, obviously only just started the YouTube stuff and started making the videos. But yeah, if you do have any questions, you know, by all means, shoot me a question, any videos you want to know how to do or see me do then yeah i'll be up for up for taking requests and suggestions and oh, we're getting to the end of it now we're on the last final lap here where it's just going to be shooting over the side angle of those houses and then we should return to home and then we'll have a look at what we could do then for the close-up 3d scan and see what we can find Anyway, now there is a glider just come into the sky, but that glider is about five or six hundred feet high. I'm watching him. The drone's coming back now. So he's just coming into our airspace, but I, obviously we're all good now to go. Um, so we land the drone and just wait for him to go over. Of course, you can't hear gliders because they make no noise. So I didn't hear him coming. I just looked up and he's going above us. Right, here it is. I'm watching the drone now. I put up on that one. It will show it, follow that blue line in, and it will come back and land. Hopefully, come on GPS, exactly where it took off. Let's see how well this does on an auto land, on auto return to home after a mission. Come on. DJI, make me proud. I'm going to stand back a little bit so I don't have to break my neck and look up. That is looking good. There we go, and he's gonna, I've got the mic on, don't have to come too close. He's gonna land down in front of me. There we go, boom. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna, the drone itself will now start making, um, basically like the 3D model of the area, and then I'm gonna take it up again and we try and make a quick through drone. So I'm just gonna pause for that minute um, while I do all that. 